Yeah, and of course, what you're doing um, in domestic policy is just a small um, step because you've, you've also got plans um, in the international stage. Um, you mentioned that Ecuador is now now has the presidency for two, for 2017 for the G77 group of nations, and it's trying to bring to the UN uh, a new proposal uh, to sort of create this institution um, legislating or at least setting standards for tax avoidings uh, to crack down on tax savings and so on and so forth. So on the one hand, the referendum you're doing domestically is the is a world's first time, basically. But something like this to the UN, as has been proposed before, um, it couldn't go through. Do you, do you know why? What are the forces um, opposing this sort of proposal in the world to have global governance and the way tax systems work? Uh, yeah, I think that First of all, we should start by saying that there's an ongoing tradition in G77 and in the global south against, uh, well, tax havens in general and in favor of greater tax justice. Um, and this, these, this kind of struggle has had uh, ups and downs over the few last few decades. Certainly the uh, neoliberal agenda and the kind of deregulation agenda of Thatcherism and Reaganomics and so on and so forth in the 80s and 90s uh, didn't do us any favors. But if you look at the G77 and, and, and the kind of pressures that the G77, there are actually 134 countries in the G77. It's called the G77 because it was created in the 60s by 77 nations. But there are, there are currently 134 countries out of 193 nations in the United Nations. So it's kind of a, a broad two thirds majority of the international community and that two-thirds majority has been pressuring uh, pretty consistently over the years and decades for uh, tax justice and the G77 as precise formula has been the creation of an intergovernmental body within the United Nations in order to uh, fight against not just against tax havens that's one aspect but in favor of greater tax justice because there are also other practices such as what I would call tax dumping, which is kind of a race to the bottom, this kind of competition between neighbors. I'll lower my taxes so that I'm more, so that I get more, uh, you know, I attract capital, and then my neighbor will lower his taxes as a response to that, and so on and so forth, and the kind of race to the bottom, which favors capital, of course, and uh, it goes against the needs of the human rights, I would say, of, of, of human beings who need the state to accompany them and give them social so, uh, services and, and because of the lack of, of, of taxes, those uh, states are of, often in a very precarious situation with regards to the guaranteeing of, of basic human rights. So there's, there's an agenda for greater tax justice there in the G77, but it's often been boycotted or resisted by a number of countries who are defending the status quo and the kind of usual suspects there, a number of countries in the OECD in particular, who sometimes have kind of shown goodwill by asking for greater transparency, but uh, in a very kind of coy way without really being radical about what this kind of transparency means. Um, and so there, there was a lot of resistance, certainly in 2015, the big UN conference on financing for development, we were talking about financing for development just now, in Addis Ababa was, I would say, from the perspective of the G77 and from the perspective of tax justice and fighting tax havens, a failure because the OECD countries boycotted it. You know, a number of European countries, the United States, a number of wealthy countries weren't in favor of this. Now, the, what's interesting is that since the scandal of the Panama Papers and since tax justice and tax havens are back on the agenda, including uh, a number of corruption scandals that are linked to the Panama Papers and linked to uh, tax havens, there is, we sense, there is a much more favorable global climate for this traditional G77 reivindication, this tr traditional G77 demand to be back on the table in the, in the United Nations. And so, we, which is why Ecuador is you know, not necessarily inventing uh, the wheel again, uh, but is kind of taking a, a quite a historic demand of the Global South and putting it back to the fore now that the circumstances are changing. There's also a very interesting development, which is the fact that a lot of OECD countries are linking tax havens directly now with the issue of global crime and terrorism. Uh, 
obviously a lot of them are not well i mean our major position is the link between tax justice tax havens with financing for development and global justice and issues that have to do with with human rights and development and so on and so forth that's not necessarily the discourse we're hearing from a number of wealthy countries traditional uh, defenders of the status quo but if we can all jump on the anti-tax haven bandwagon even if it's for different reasons then so be it you know that that's something we welcome so what i would say is even if we're not uh, inaugurating something completely new the demand for having an intergovernmental tax body, I think, is, uh, is something much more viable than it was a few years ago.